In Jeremiah 21, 5 to 7, reading out of the King James Bible, God is speaking regarding the uh, remnant of Zedekiah, and this is those that are fragmented in Lucifer, Satan, and Devil, in various ways, uh, also in this covenant. In verse 5, And I myself will fight against you with an outstretched hand and with a strong arm, even in anger and in fury and in great wrath, and I will smite the inhabitants of this city, both man and beast. So this is the iron and the clay. So the clay is the man, the beast is the iron. They are smitten. The city is the world of Babylon inside the souls of humanity. They shall die of a great pestilence. In verse 7 says, And afterwards, saith the Lord, I will deliver Zedekiah, king of Judah, and his servants, and his people, as such that are left from this city, the condition of this city, Babylon, church of Egypt, from the pestilence, from the sword, and from the famine, into the hand of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. So it's too late. Armageddon has begun. That's what this is saying. It's too late. Now, uh, and afterwards, saith the Lord, verse 7, I will deliver Zedekiah, king of Judah, and his servants, and the people, and such as are left in this city. So this pestilence and sword and famine is the flesh, spirit, and soul, and it happens... Right to the sounding of the seventh trumpet, everyone is sealed, and then Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, puts them to the sword. So it comes like a thief, it comes suddenly, it's already here. The eighth king goes into perdition, already been elected, and it's too late. The seventh trumpet sounds extremely soon, and Everyone's sealed. Pestilence, and then and then the sword. Judgment. It's too late. So, the pestilence is falsehoods. That's the flesh. The sword is the demonic invasion in the soul. That's the sword of that flesh, that person. And then the famine is the spirit it is a thick black covering to not hear the word of God into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon in Jeremiah verse 21 in verse 4 in verse 4 Right, okay, in verse 4 also, this is what the Holy Spirit reveals, revealed this also. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I will turn back the weapons of war that are in your hands, wherewith you fight against the king of Babylon. So the horn is slowly disappearing. That's the horn in Daniel chapter 8. That's the, horn, the, the, the weapons of war of Israel. That is the inheritance of Jacob on the earth. And... Um, the war that are in your hands, wherewith you fight against the king of Babylon, the weapons of war that are in your hands, wherewith you fight against the king of Babylon, and against the Chaldeans which besiege you without the walls. Without the walls. Means that they are free without to go to war, without um, any restrictions. They are the workers of Lucifer, Satan, the devil. Lucifer, Satan, the devil frees them to go and do whatever they want to do. They have no barriers. They have no walls. They have no, no, uh, um, institutionalized walls. Uh, they basically go out on a, on a war. They're waging war without any rules. Okay. And this is while the church is still within the walls a policy, procedure, and protocol, uh, religious Egyptian uh, doctrine of Lucifer, Satan, the devil. Uh, breaking the laws of God, 
and in their fragmented minds believing that they are actually uh, doing good ministry, when in fact they're actually responsible for slaying children and for um, causing more confusion in the mix in, within the religious system. God is the healer, not Lucifer, Satan, the devil. The spirit of man, in communion with the Holy Spirit of God, gives truth and life. And the spirit of man, in communion with the unholy spirits of Lucifer, is betrayed. So, this is New Age religion. New Age religion, I was speaking with a, with a brother in street ministry yesterday, and this is the New Age, this, uh, believes you believe whatever you want to believe, that's what you are. Whatever you believe, that's what you are. And that's not true. It's not true. Uh, people want to live to be 150. People do not want to get diseases or sicknesses. People want to be rich. People, the, the goals and dreams of people, okay, what they believe, is um, is not um, always achieved, and what the devil does is the devil gives them. They'll say, "Well, um, or, um, say they want to live for eternity," and. Um, in the way, in the ways that they're walking, and that, and and they want to be, you know, they want to be God, whatever they um, seek to be. Okay. If the meditation is done without Christ, without Jesus, then the invocation is of the devil, and the devil betrays. The devil comes in, says, "Yes, I'll grant you those things." And then the devil comes in and betrays humanity, fools humanity, into believing they become whatever they believe, and then betrays them in a lying, in a uh, longing quest, a quest that is actually a lifetime. Little bits, little pieces, little nuggets brings them through that eventually leads them to the grave. That is... Uh, and it's fragmentation also dressed in ungodly attire and self-exaltation tossing their ways their own ways beyond borders tossing their own ways beyond what is true ministry In Timothy, 2 Timothy 3.12, all who want to live a godly life will be persecuted. Paul said to the church, said, partner with me. But now what the church is doing, they're saying Paul, they're wanting Paul to partner with them in their sins. That's how exalted they have become. That's how fragmented, that is how depraved, that is another word, to say how broken in pieces they become, how, how depraved in their minds. Paul said, I wish they would all emasculate themselves in all these unbeliefs, in all these ways that they are teaching the people, trying to minister in sin, with sin, trying to minister in their own way, believing that they're actually ministering and doing God a favor in what they're doing, uh, when in fact they're actually damaging people. They're actually the cause. They're the cause of the situation of the famine and pestilence and sword that's on the land. And, and every one of their rewards, um, God does not need anyone to minister in, in falsehoods and lies. God does not need anyone to um, minister in a, in a cunningly deceptive way. Because Jesus Christ said, everything I've done, I've done publicly. I've, I've, I've told to, to my disciples, to everybody, you ask them what I said. 
there was nothing hidden. There was no dark secret agenda. There was no... Uh, uh, he, a, 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 a reed he did not bruise. So a weaker person he did not, he did not bruise while he was doing his ministry. So uh, those types of ways that the church ministers, I was in ministry again, this was yesterday, and uh, I had a, a Christian walk by and say, well, that's not for today. That's for another day. And there was this, this child festival that they were having, which I was there a couple years ago, when they had a couple years ago or so. And they're completely eating the kids. They're killing the kids. And this, um, there were two mothers with their children. They were walking next to, uh, uh, to the cross. They came up upon the cross and said, one said, that is for a different day. And the kids are being completely ruined in this festival of this uh, uh as they indoctrinate the spirits of Lucifer inside the children, and that's exactly what they do. That's exactly what it does. I mean, I was, when I walked in there, I was greeted by all the security people that were there. It was a convergence. It was a magnet. Immediately. And they came to me nicely, big smiles, and said that I had to leave, that they would walk me out because uh, I was a safety hazard because of the, the trailer the bike trader, which is hogwash. Okay, it doesn't even make sense. Okay, so um, they wouldn't tell me exactly what the reason is. Kind of, and, and she said she was a Christian. She goes to church. So I started talking to her regarding the spirit of Christ, the spirit of Lucifer. And as I, I was being led out, walked out with her, I walked with her. And um, anyhow, God is just showing me all of the fragmentation that is going on, all of the indoctrination, how Lucifer, Satan, and Devil is ruling over the world now. Um, ministering in an ungodly way, ministering in a way that breaks the laws of God, is not helping anybody. It's adding to the problem. You see? So, um, what the people need to see, they need to see holiness. They need to see the gospel of Christ, of Jesus. That's what the people need to see. Christianity needs to stand out as a thor as, as a uh, as a as a thumb, as a um, just the way Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego stood up, stood out. And because right now they are giving their the people are, are bowing down to the system. The people are, they're all coming together as one in this new world order, in this one world government, okay? this globalization. And the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ revealed to me that we do not need this type of globalization. This, this globalization is a oneness where all the souls become one, all the cultures become integrated into one person. And... Uh, it is a uh, Lucifer, Satan, the devil creating his own, unifying the entire creation as himself being God. And so what Lucifer, Satan, the devil does, he comes, it comes in a likeness of Jesus Christ. It comes in the likeness of the angel of light as Jesus Christ. But in every single way, it ministers in falsehoods. Ministering in falsehood is not accepted of Jesus Christ. It's not accepted. So, here in... Um, Second uh, Corinthians ten four and uh, three says in four says in first in second Corinthians Second Corinthians ten three so for we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh. 
For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So this is the spiritual warfare that Paul is telling the church regarding, because Paul has the, had a, a thorn, and um, it was a spiritual thorn, it was a fragmentation that came to torment his mind. It could have been one that was speaking vanity against God, it was breaking one of the Ten Commandment laws, and so it would, it would uh, speak bad, it would blaspheme God in his mind because of all the persecution that he was going over and all of this. And um, that kept him extremely humble. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty, through God to pulling down of strongholds. So, so Paul here, he himself has worked to overcome. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So he's talking to the fragmentation. He's saying, you repent. I do not allow you in the kingdom of God. You fragmentation, in my mind, in the mind of Paul, I can, you, are, I do not, um, you are not entering the kingdom of God. I bind you. Okay? Because uh, what I bind you here on earth and in earth, I also bind that uh, in, in heaven. You're not allowed to go to heaven. I do not allow you to. That part of me... And, and I am not in agreement with you. Okay, what you're saying, I do not agree with you. I renounce you. I resist you. I repent of you. I recognize you. And I rebuke you. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ. You repent. You do not speak that way to Jesus Christ. You repent your sins. And get out. Right now in Jesus' name. You have no place in the kingdom of God. So, this is the warfare that we can do regarding that fragmentation that's in the mind, the fragmentation that is that is um, that is a compelling alcohol addiction, that fragmentation that is stirring on sexual lust, uh, that is desiring a, a, a person is a very very right now the Holy Spirit has shown me that this fragmentation is really exalted, it's really exalted more now than ever before. It is extremely powerful. And it leads the body into wanting, the physical body. And so we have to fight spiritually to conquer it in our spiritual lives. We need the Holy Spirit of Christ to come in. We need to ask Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, come in with your Holy Spirit and remove this desire from my flesh. Heal my mind and you'll feel a headache. You'll feel like a little pain, something going in, in, in your mind. And that's not, you don't take a Tylenol for that. That's Jesus rewiring. That's Jesus healing. That is Jesus putting his Holy Spirit in that place of fragmentation. And so slowly uh, having victory over that. And so that it, it, it stops. It, it cannot uh, go any further. And it actually dissipates where uh, it becomes less. Okay? Okay. And, and then we conquer that. And as we conquer that, we become built up in Christ with more authority, more power that God gives us because we have conquered. And so that's what God is doing in everyone. That's conquering that we must do. It could be anything. A fragmentation can be anything. It, it, what it is, it's a deception of um, engaging in worldly lusts and that could be anything it could be uh, an, it, it's, it's an overabundance of worldly indulgence in, in anything could be a recreation could be a, a house a car could be anything now uh, so that that's the new age and a fragment, the fragmentation that we are to overcome. So I hope you're edified. Uh, God bless you. Seek the Lord God, and uh, and be be forgiven for all things that that uh, we have done to cause anyone to stumble. Jesus Christ said. It is impossible, but that offenses come, but woe to whom those offenses come through. 
Jesus Christ said, suffer these little ones to come to me. Suffer them to come to me. Um, Woe to anyone who causes one of these little ones to stumble. Better there be a millstone tied around his neck and he be tossed into the sea than he causes one of these little ones to stumble. So our walk is to be pure in Christ so that we do not cause anyone to stumble, so that our message, our lives are built around Christ. And so when and so we overcome all those uh, so not only are we forgiven for things of the past, but once we get to know uh, know Christ, as we are working our consecration and we're born again, that we completely crush those things, and those things have absolutely no dominion. They have absolutely no place. They are we, we are overcomers in Christ in all those areas. So we have to overcome in every area, every single area of our lives. In everything, in all things, all sins, no matter what they are. And once we reach that place, then we are perfect. We are consecrated in Christ. And Christ holds us. And then we are able to, um, to do great things for Christ in our lives. And uh, we must also be very careful of imitators. See, once we arrive at that place when we destroy all the fragmentation and we are not in agreement with any of the demons, with anything of Lucifer, Satan, the devil, you see, um, we are perfect in Christ and there, there, there's talk and then there's action. And the way we know if a person is really conquered is through their actions, not their words as much. Because there's many false words, many false beliefs, and many false doctrines. False doctrines is from fragmentation. Okay, believing in false things is falsehood. It's from the devil. Um, you know, in uh, Jeremiah 4.30 says, In vain shalt thou make thyself fair. And that speaks not only regarding physical uh, uh, clothing, presentations, dressing like um, like the world does, uh, that also speaks regarding a spiritual appearance of being fair. Uh, just like that security person who came to me with all smiles and gentleness, and but uh, deep down inside the Holy Spirit showed me her craftiness. And she was just trying, she was exalting herself in her in her office, uh, believing that she is uh, more intellectual, she is smarter uh, than I am, uh, and that I'm just this this buffoon or whoever I this this loser with a, a, a Jesus cross. That I'm some sort of a sick person. Regarding uh, the uh, my under my understanding, the opposite is true. Okay, regarding uh, when. My, my understanding of life, of what is happening, is, in, is, is more, is, is, in real, is the reality of what's happening, where, where, whereas her belief system is, is shrouded in the fragmentation, in the cloud of the devil. It's the truth. She's, it's a darkness. It's a darkness. She does not understand the Antichrist spirit. I tried to explain that to her. She didn't believe me. She wouldn't agree. Well, after I spoke with her, the Holy Spirit proved to her that you're either with Christ or you're not. If you're not allowing Christ in your house, you're kicking him out of your house. As they described, I was in the, the permit holder's house, and the permit holder decides that he wants to um, remove the Bill of Rights in his house. He wants to remove... The, the freedom of humanity in his house and and his house is now in a public area outside and that's how they, they refer to this they, they try new angles all the time uh, well um, that person okay, is Antichrist because 
it is the message that's being removed. It is not the, the, the cargo trailer. It is not the bike. It is the message that is being removed. So that's that's what the Holy Spirit, you know, shows us. That's that's as we um, just experience the minds, uh, the, the condition of humanity, and that's part of this ministry is just to observe, uh, and uh, the Holy Spirit shows shows me uh, how close we are uh, to the end. I mean, we are in tribulation. I mean, we are past tribulation. I mean, tribulation is, we're in a bad place. Right now, the world is completely gone. We're in, we're in an emergency. The world is completely gone. It's when, when we, we're out there and we're experiencing these things, the Holy Spirit shows us where we are in the timeline. Our hearts are, are ignited in, uh, in, in the, with the Holy Spirit in the reality of the times that we're in right now. And uh, Well, the Holy Spirit, I, I was sensing in my spirit that we are right at the threshold of great tribulation. We're right at the threshold. If, if, if we haven't already really kind of stepped in, because we're, we're, I know, I feel in my spirit, we're at that point. We are at that point now, and um, the Bible speaks regarding regarding the church and the great apostasy. I don't know if I mentioned, I think I did mention how I'm being persecuted by the brother and there's and the sister also, both of them. And it's so obvious. And and, and and the Bible says that even the most delicate woman amongst you will eat her child. Will eat will eat their their own. And that that's with what that that woman was doing. I know she was from Nigeria, I think. I know she's a Christian, obviously. Two women walking with their children, right next to they they pass across, and she says, that is not for today. That's for a different date. Her, exact, her, her words were, that's for a different date. I heard that. And we're not in great tribulation. We're not at the threshold of something bad happening with the with the uh, visitations that we're experiencing from the north physically and spiritually they have no clue what is happening so anyhow well there I go again with anyhow um, anyhow I guess refers to the fifth generation after hellfire standing before God in judgment uh, you're either a first fruit or you're going to end up in judgment. There are five foolish virgins. There are five wise virgins. And right now they're still sleeping. And the only way they're going to be woken is with some sort of a EMP attack, a bomb, some sort of an emergency. It's the only way they're going to wake them. So I hope you're edified. Um, we have to conquer fragmentation. We have to conquer our fleshly desires. We have to be able to rightly divide the word of truth, rightly divide uh, the flesh, spirit, and the soul, and get healing through Christ, understanding the afflictions of the flesh and how that affects the soul, our soul, and uh, how our spirit is set free with the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, three courts. Ezekiel or um, Ecclesiastes 4 12.
So I hope you're edified. God bless you. Jesus Christ is Lord.